Hey, Sam. Yeah. What were you most excited about? Getting to watch The Falcon and The Winter Soldier early today or eating lunch with your Uncle Odie? And don't worry, Sam. Your uh, your Uncle Odie doesn't listen to the show, so. Yeah, that's true. He'll never hear your answer, ever. Well, you know, I, I was more excited to have lunch with my uncle Oh, that's awesome. Um, that's kind of cool. But cool. if I had known what was coming in that episode, I probably would have changed my answer. Yeah. yeah <laughs> it that was, was a, such a good episode. That was nuts. That was insane. <laughs> All right. And on that note, we'll start the show after these ads specifically chosen for you, even though you're almost certain to completely ignore them for the entire 30 to 60 seconds that they're playing. This is Tatooine Sons. A chew to Star Wars, DC, and Marvel fans. Uh, before we get into today's show, I'd like to remind you that Tatooine Sons has a T Public store yeah. that you have got to. To check out. Definitely. You'll find lots of shirts, mugs, stickers, and more. Turbis. Uh, obviously, yeah. uh, obviously Turbis. Mm-hmm. Um, with all of your favorite characters like from Turbis. all of your favorite <laughs> pop culture franchises, not just Turbis. Um, of course, my favorites are the Boba Fett shirts, but you know, that's, that's just me. I know, I know. Did not see um, that coming. But it's really easy to get into. Just click on the link here in the show notes and take a look around. Um, but enough of that. Let's get this show started. It's true. It's true. What is the name of the Porg and the Millennium Falcon? Force is strong in my family. What do you think his name is? <laughs> it's a big moment. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. Maybe Turbis? Do or do not. There is no try. Turbis? Pablo, if you're listening to this live stream, that Porg's name is now Turbis. It's a good Star Wars name. We're not done yet. These guys record an awesome podcast called Tatooine Sons. Everybody was lit. Yeah, we got to try hot dogs with toasted buttered buns yeah. it's probably as normal for a lot of people but it's yeah. not for yeah us. like our neighbor came out we were like freaking out about it and told him about it and he's like yeah everybody knows that so, yeah. <laughs> it was our it was first good. time yeah that was a lot of it fun was very so, good well welcome uh, to tattooing sons a pop culture podcast uh we believe that pop culture is the mythology of this generation and that there really truly is a story it's written on our souls and that these modern day myths speak to that story. And that's why we spend time talking about Star Wars and Marvel and DC and Lord of the Rings and I don't know. Whatever else we feel yeah. like at the time. Big Bang Theory. Yeah, that was a good show. I don't think we ever talked about that. Anyway, it's not really, I mean, it's pop culture, but it's not what we talk about. Anyway, um, uh, I am David. I'm the dad. Hi. Hi, Hi dad. dad. What's up, guys? I'm joined by a couple of uh, pretty cool dudes uh, that happen Stop to be my it. sons. They must take it after their mom. How are you doing today, BB Nate? I'm doing good. Excited to be doing this again and excited to talk about Falcon Warrior Soldier and the amazing trailers that came out this week. We haven't talked about it at all since watching the episode, really. So this is going to be fun. How about you, Samuel LaHud? How are you? I'm great. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, uh, great. That, yeah, I'm, I'm hyped after that last episode of Falcon and Winter Soldier. So, yeah, it was a lot of fun um, with that. All right, so we should explain who Uncle Odie is because that's not even his real name. I know that's not. When we yeah, were talking about him a, earlier. A strange name. Well, it's like what wasn't Odie like the dog in Garfield or he something? He is the okay, dog. So it's in not Garfield. a super uncommon name. No, but definitely you wouldn't want to be connected and with that dog as being like who you are. Okay, that's <laughs> that right. dog was dumb, and uh, your uncle Jody. <laughs> was not dumb. So that's uh, mom's brother. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were only 19 months apart when he was born. She couldn't pronounce the word Jody. So she called him Odie. And that mm. stuck throughout their entire growing up. And then when you guys were born, he became Uncle Odie. And he was yeah. driving through town and he stopped by for some just hot dogs. <laughs> that turned into gourmet hot dogs. Yeah, because, gourmet hot dogs because mm. they're toasted buttered buns. Which that was like is the really... whole reason he stopped by is he's like, oh, y'all having hot dogs? And then mom, and he was like, yeah, I like the buns toasted. And mom's like, I'd never heard of that. Yeah. And he's like, oh, we got to fix that. So, so he stopped yeah. by. It was yeah. a lot of fun. It, it was, was good, too. It, it was, was really very good. good. Yeah. So um, we got a couple weeks uh, left before we move. Can you believe that, guys? Yeah, we have a lot to pack. <laughs> yeah, there's still a bit to do, but... You guys are going to do a lot of packing on Sunday, I understand. Maybe. Yay. Trying to get the podcast room <laughs> yeah. uh, taken care of, which yeah. is going to be the hardest room. Uh, really, yeah. It's the one room we've really, like, 
settled into. <laughs> yeah, well, because we were doing the the Facebook right. show, and so that that created some challenges with it. So anyway, yeah. Um, and then we're fortunate to still have a Buster, you know. Yeah, this dog is on his twelfth life. Yeah. So for those of you that are maybe just new to the show, the segment you hear during the intro that you just heard is where BB Nate at 12 years old before he had a voice change asked really? Ryan Johnson uh, what the name of the uh, main pork on the Millennium Falcon yeah. in The Last Jedi was Ryan responded what do you want to name him he calls him Tur- BB, Res- BB Nate responded with Turbus which is actually the name of our dog Tuckerized. Tuckerized is something that happens in Star Wars where you take two syllables, you flip them and can create a new name. Buster became Turbus. Turbus is now canon and Turbus or Buster, excuse me, almost died this week when our neighbor's pit bull got loose and attacked him while he was trying in our backyard. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. I was out there and he was on a leash and this pit bull came up and started trying to bite his neck and everything. And my foot was like pushing the pit bull back it was a lot of fun yeah uh, and you like were holding buster up by the leash on his collar just and, trying like, to hold trying him to pull him back strangling and him. he was just standing there i'm like get inside you dumb dog yeah it was it was a little it scary was, but was, he was fine was, he was no worse for the wear nah he's, he's a little bit uh sh- shook up after but yeah. he was fine. he's good yeah He's awesome. Still got a buster. So Yeah, so good. Well, why don't we talk about this episode that we've been waiting to talk about all day? Yeah, so it's uh, the end of Act 2 of The Falcon and Winter Soldier. And boy, did a lot happen. Um, we got to look at some of Bucky's time in Wakanda. Um, Carly is getting more and more radical. And uh, John Walker, <laughs> where to even begin with him? <laughs> uh, we'll break it all down after this. Be on your guard. There are older and fouler things than orcs in the deep places of the world. All right, then. Keep your secrets. I imagine it's a little confusing. It'd be more appropriate for Nathan for him it, to do this segment. I mean, like for his music. Oh, that's more true. Appropriate for yeah. Oh, okay. So, so yeah. what we're talking about is, is Samuel the Hutt's intro music. There is obviously Lord of the Rings themed, right? Um, with it, well, explain why. I just, I just absolutely love Lord of the Rings and that whole story. It's one of my favorite like movies. I, I consider it all one movie at this point, just because it is such a good story. And it's, it, it gets me every time I'm even considering for my birthday, asking if we can do a whole marathon one day at some point. Ooh. Wow. After we move into our new house. Yes. So. Ooh. But I, I love that movie. There are those movies. They are so. great movies. That's anyway. Good. All right. Why don't we talk about this other stuff? So. Yeah. So, um, let's, let's just address the elephant in the room. John Walker. Wow. Let's just go there. Like we don't need people waiting. That's first, what people- first of all, Wyatt Russell did a fantastic job acting today. Yes. It, it was fantastic. It was Boy, he um, I got real Kurt Russell vibes from him oh, a yeah. of times. Oh I mean, yeah. He, he sounded like him at times. He even looked like him. It he was, is his yeah. father's son. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. Um, but this is kind of the, the episode we've been waiting for when it comes to John's character. Exactly. I mean, we see him become the uh, megalomaniacal. Good Lord, that's a big word. You Megalom- spelled that? I did spell it, and I came up with it. I just can't say it. But you know what I'm, you know what I'm <laughs> going with. Um, he becomes that, that, that person they've been setting this character up to become really since day one. Um, you know, first he busts into uh, Sam and Carly's meeting. That was going very well, might I add. Yeah. Um, and causes Carly to run away and just, you know, generally screws everything up because he can't see the past, the end of his nose. Um, or his ears. He has big ears. He does have big ears. <laughs> although if you're seeing your ears, there's a problem. Um, <laughs> And then eventually he gets his hands on the um, last vial of super soldier serum. And then after that, we see him get his uh, shield handed to him by a bunch of girls. <laughs> that was um, awesome. <laughs> such a good scene. I loved Bucky. And he's like, you're doing good, John. <laughs> and Zemo's just standing back there, you know, like drinking. This is fun. That was so yeah. fun. Anyway. Um, but we got to give John a little credit. I mean, they were Wakandan. Yeah, um, they were freaking awesome. That was so cool. What were the, yeah. the, the Dora Del Mirage or something? 
like that. It doesn't matter. It was uh, awesome. The, the, um, the amazing butt kickers is exactly, what they were because right. they, they kicked butt. That was so. so cool. Yeah. Um, but after that fight, if you can call it that, uh, John remarks that they weren't even super soldiers yeah. and yeah. they won. Um, and then later on, there was this really interesting discussion with um, John and Lamar. Like they're in some mall or something and they're like, you know, if you had the serum, like, would you take it? and stuff what, what were y'all's thoughts on that whole conversation it i loved the conversation itself because it mirrored the conversation between the doctor and steve in the first avenger um he's like it brings in he's like the serum brings in whoever the man is inside out mm. he's like a good man becomes great and a bad man becomes worse like like red skull exactly and what lamar said is he like he was like wouldn't a little bit po- of more power bring out who you really are and bring, make you more powerful and so it mirrored that but it was kind of a twisted way like they weren't seeing it correctly like more power is better than being a good man, like mm. how Steve was. And so I really loved the conversation itself and how it was a different take on that really fantastic scene. Well, it's also a different take on the exact same conversation that happened earlier in the episode between Sam and Bucky. Yes. Because Bucky asked Sam, or who was it that asked? It was Carl. It was Zemo. No, right? it was Zemo. You're right. You're right. You're right. It was Zemo. Ask Sam, if you had the opportunity to take the serum, would you take it? And He's he like, responded within no. a second. He's like, no, absolutely not. And even Baron Zemo reacted and said, wow, no, no hesitation. hesitation. Mm-hmm. And so when we see that same conversation take place between Walker and, uh, and Battlestar. Lamar. Yeah, Lamar. Hoskins. Okay. Um, it's, it was showing, it's showing exactly what we've been saying for this entire series that John Walker is not good. No. Right. But I, Sam is. Mm-hmm. And that's why Sam deserves the shield. He doesn't want the power. Those who want power should never have it. That's the problem with politics yeah. <laughs> because these people are craving power and people that crave power should never be given it. It is bad anyway. Yeah. So, so um, yeah, there was that really interesting conversation. They talked about like the whole, he had medals of honor and like, yeah, if we saw what we, if you knew what we had to do, like we wouldn't have the medals or like it was, it was really dark and it showed like his uh, mindset. Um, but then later on when uh, Sam is trying to again, have a civil conversation with Carly, uh, John decides, <laughs> to show up and cause more problems again um but during the skirmish lamar ends up getting captured and tied up john goes looking for him and during this we see him show off his newfound super strength oh um and then eventually john ends up uh back with sam and bucky fighting off a whole bunch of uh flag smashers and during the fight lamar en- en- ends up escaping and comes back and tries to intervene but is actually killed by Carly. Yeah. Like, Were you guys so, uh, as shocked about that as I was? Yeah. I was yeah. so sudden. Like, it, they, he didn't have, like, his dying words or dying breath. Like, he, he was done. He was just dead. He got yeah. punched and was dead. I mean, hmm. not much for that. Sorry for that actor. I guess you're done. But yeah. uh, he got his 15 minutes of fame in Marvel. But anyway, that, uh, you know, at that point, uh, everybody, you know, kind of decides it's probably best that they go and take a walk um, and get out of there. <laughs> Um, as everyone is fleeing though, John jumps out of window, oh, out a window and does his, you know, superhero landing. Mm-hmm. Was, I don't know if y'all cool. noticed that. It was much better than, much better than Bucky's superhero yeah, landing. Yeah, poor Bucky. He'll get episode. one eventually. Yeah. Um, but he had one in Winter Soldier. Yeah. Did he? Oh yeah. He flips off the car on the interstate. And oh and yeah. Stuff. It yeah. Was that's awesome. It was so cool. Okay. Um, you know, so he jumps out this window and he's like looking, he's searching for revenge for Lamar's death, right? Um, eventually he finds one of the flag smashers and, um, you know, is asking him where Carly is because Carly is the one who killed Lamar. So he's looking for her, but he doesn't even give the guy time to answer and mm-hmm. he just takes the shield and really gruesomely murders him. Yeah. You take the scene in Civil War yep. where Cap is trying to battle Iron uh, Man. Iron Man. In uh, Russia, right? Mm-hmm. It's at the, uh, yeah. the where the Winter yeah. Soldier program mm-hmm. is, and there that's that epic battle, right? And he's just taking the shield and he's just pounding the corner after Iron Man hurts, like severely hurts Bucky, mm-hmm. right? But the difference is Cap knows that there's this armor, yes, mm-hmm. and he's just trying to stop. Yeah, he defeats the enemy, but he doesn't kill him. Yeah, that is not the way that John Walker used. John the defeated show. the enemy. And then kept going. Yeah. 
It was it was a really interesting parallel. I and they and they very specifically chose to do it that way. I think, um, mm. and so you know that the he he kills this 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 flag smasher as the whole world is watching. All these people have their phones out, um, and then the episode ends as John stands there with the bloodied shield on his yeah. arm. Very comic book like style. That whole like image just looked straight out of a comic. Um, it seems like our theory about John came true. It's not a theory anymore. It's fact. Yeah. Um, but we expected Lamar to take the serum, too, and become mm. this battle star. Now that Hoskins is dead, what do you think this is going to mean for the character of John Walker? I think that he's just going to go solo. Um, I think he's just going to be a bad guy. If he even makes it through this series, I'll be surprised um, if he's he might be locked up. Who knows what's going to happen with Zemo and him? Um I really don't know where it goes from here, but I just I don't think he gets another sidekick. Uh, I, I think I saw somebody say that Carly might become a sidekick. I'm like, mm, no, that's too much, nope. too much bad blood there. I mean, Carly killed Lamar, and then he becomes mm. a sidekick. That'd be mm. that would be a great conflict character arc, but it wouldn't happen. Yeah, no, he's no, there's no way that they team up. If no. anything, there's an epic battle coming between John Walker and Carly. Yeah, because John is still as much as he's literally tarnished the shield. Yeah. Um, brought, she's brought shame upon the name of Captain America. He's no longer Captain America. The world knows he is not a good man. He's U.S. Yeah, I mean, okay. it, it goes back to that one part in uh, when he when those uh, Wakandans came in and he's like, hi, I'm Captain America. Steve would never no, do that. No, he's, his ego is exactly his problem. Yup. And, um, but he's still is going to feel this pull towards stopping the flag smashers. That's what this right. whole thing has always been about. So there's no way he sides with Carly. It's the epic battle between him and Carly. Right. What we're going to end up seeing now though, is this is what moves Sam to pick up the shield. You're right. He needs to take it away from, from- I'm like, really friggin' emotional about this show right now because I mean more so than I was even with the Wanda and vision stuff at this point because Sam's and Bucky Mm -hmm. absolutely love like a brother Captain America and they just witnessed the death of Captain America the 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 symbol yes and uh and Sam is Right now, you know, post this moment where he's standing there holding that shield, right? This moment at this juncture, Sam is blaming himself. Mm -hmm. And Bucky Everybody else is blaming Sam. him probably yeah. because we've already seen that. So this is, this is a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. So awesome. Um, yeah. And then we, um, we got to see a pretty human side of, um, of Carly in this episode, yeah. um, you know, minus her killing Lamar probably. But, um, I mean, you know, there were a lot of, intimate- but even though, no, even then when she killed him, she's like, you could see there was this moment they show her reaction and she's like, what just happened? What did she I didn't do? Mean to no, kill it's just the strength was too much. She isn't in control of it. Right. Um, there were a lot of intimate moments with her and, um, and Sam, which was cool. Like, I like how they mentioned at the beginning how Sam was like, I work with grieving soldiers. That's my mm. job. Let me talk to her. I know what she's going through. I know how to get to her. Um, so it was really neat to see that uh, discussion. Like, what did y'all think about that? That different type of interaction between hero and supervillain. I'm using air quotes here because that those terms are very fluid in this series. Um, but it was more like a civil discussion rather than than like fisticuffs that we're used yeah. to. What did y'all think about that? I, uh, it feels a lot like um, the vision vision battle at the end of WandaVision. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, they fought for a little bit, but then they just started talking things out and it was all okay. And I, I like when they during fights they reason with each other they figure out the differences and while they might not agree at the end they understand that they both understand and because sam does sam understands exactly where carly is and what carly has been doing and everything yeah i mean he even says at one point he's like oh i have no problem with your mission at all i think it's great you're just going about it all wrong yeah do it the right ways go through the correct channels and see if you can get to the parts 
where you're wanting to be. Mm. So I, I, it was a really interesting scene and I really liked it. And that's another reason why I think Sam's going to, he needs to become the new, um, Captain America. Cause they talked about when they were at, uh, when Carly and that other flag smasher were at the grave, they're like, the people need someone who's like them, who understands what they're going through right now. Sam knows what they're going through. He was part of the blip. He's had to get reestablished too. Just because he was a hero doesn't mean he has it all easy. That was the whole point of those first that first episode with the ship and everything. But he doesn't understand what they're going through. Carly, there's a scene at the at the memorial for the mama Mama, oh crap! I, uh, Something. Anyway, yeah. They, Mama they, Madonna. <laughs> anyway, no, not Mama Madonna. Okay. Um, anyway, the, this person, we understand the connection with these people and this character because this character rescued these kids after the blip. Yes. Um, or not after the blip, after the snap. So in that five year period, these kids were, were, lo- they lost their families. They lost everything. They didn't know how to take care of themselves. And this mother took care of them. And this is the position that Carly is having. Now they've, they, the world worked together. The world didn't have, in, can I, can I, can I drop a, uh, go for it. Maybe th- there was, there was a, an element of what Thanos thought would happen that actually came true. Thanos snapped because there were too many people and, and, and it was designed to be helpful. Remember he did it out of what he Uh, thought was goodness. Well, now all of a sudden you've got half the population on the earth and the earth works together. And, and for Carly and the flag smashers, this was a good experience. It wasn't great. I mean, you lose your family, but the result of it was good. And then they, the blip happens, and every sudden everybody's back. You know, Sam and all of them are back. So Sam doesn't relate to Carly. Okay. Sam doesn't understand what Carly went through. All right. He wants to, mm-hmm. but he doesn't understand it. No, that's a good point. Um, yeah, but later on in the uh, in the episode, you know, after John messes everything up and makes it seem like Sam was setting Carly up. Um, we see her actually threaten Sam's uh, sister and nephews. Um, I don't know about y'all, uh, but that seems very much more um, terrorist than revolutionary. Yeah. Um, do you think that Sam can bring Carly back to the light side for, you know, to just bring some stars back into this <laughs> by the end of the series? Or is she gone for good at this point? I think that she's redeemable. Uh, John Walker is not. Um, I feel like that's where they're going to be going with this series. John Walker is going to be the actual bad guy. And Carly is just going to be there. And I think that she's going to go back to the right side, but after a lot of convincing. So I think that it's possible, um, but only if Sam does it the right way. Mm. Dad? I I think that, that the point of the series is to show that, that there's it's the the evil within you can be too hard to overcome absolute power corrupts absolute yeah i said that before mm-hmm. i'm just curious to see if they're applying that to it's it's a really black and white idea you know sam's good so he can have the serum steve was good so he can have the serum john walker's bad so he, he shouldn't have, have the serum. serum um can people change that's and, where carly comes and in. i think that might be what they're doing with carly because she she has the serum right and they they say the serum's supposed to amplify whoever you are on the inside right Mm. but she's been kind of wishy-washy about not wishy-washy but like she flip-flops it seems like she could be good she could be Mm. bad so i think you're right i think it could swing your way and then um we saw really like we think way back like at the very beginning of this episode we saw a really interesting sequence um it started off in wakanda uh six years prior and it showed ao the person we saw at the end of uh, episode three Mm -hmm. Helping Bucky overcome his um, Winter Soldier programming. And what was a pretty intense and emotional scene. It had yes. like flashbacks of him being the Winter Soldier. Um, big props to Sebastian Stan yeah. for his acting there. I mean, that was just really was. good acting on his part. Um, but what did y'all think about seeing some of Bucky's uh, rehabilitation? And what do y'all think about his relationship with Wakanda? Um, that was a bit deeper than we originally thought. I I always thought that his relationship with Wakanda was deep. Um, He, I mean, made that very apparent early on in the series. He, it was really the only time he's felt peace 
felt complete and utter safety and peace and that nothing's going to go wrong. And so I feel like his connection with Wakanda has always been deep. Um, I didn't think that his re- rehabilitation scene or like de brainwashing or whatever that is would be so intense. Um, I thought it would be like little increments over the time, but it was really an intense and emotional scene and I really enjoyed it. It was very good. It answered a lot of the questions that I had at the end of the last episode when we knew that, uh, that the, the code that turns him into winter soldier wasn't working anymore. Right. And so this explains why what I, Loved about that scene. You mentioned it in his, in the way Sebastian Stan portrayed, um, portrayed it. I love the fact that you see and you feel the terror in Bucky when she's going through these codes. Yeah, he's like, I, I don't want to, because he you. desperately doesn't want to be the Winter Soldier. And that shows to me that he is good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He was turned evil through a, a distortion through the winter soldier program, yeah. a reprogramming through that brainwash in his heart, in his stuff. He's the Bucky of the first Avenger. Yes. Yep. He's a good man. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, there are, um, there are only two episodes left in the Falcon and winter soldier. And if they're anything like we, what we got in this latest episode, uh, I'm not sure we're going to be able to handle it. All. <laughs> yeah. Um, just make sure y'all t- you tune in next Friday on Disney plus to just see what unfolds. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. Nate, yeah. what have you got for us this week? Well, this week was a fantastic week for trailers. We got an intense look into Black Widow, a mind-boggling look <laughs> at Loki, and a short but enticing look at Batman The Long Halloween Part 1. We will be breaking all of those down coming up. And all of that's coming after these ads personally chosen for you, but still have nothing to do with you and for things you will probably never buy. This is Tatooine Sons. Hello, Tatooine Sons family. Before we get back to the show, I just want to take a moment to say thank you for listening. Yeah, thanks. Yes. Um, it's fun talking about all of this, but even more fun because of all of your amazing feedback telling us how much you enjoy listening. It's always awesome reading your comments and reviews. If you haven't had a chance to do it yet, we'd love to invite you to give us a review on Apple, Apple Podcasts. Apple, Apple, Apple Podcasts. Pod- Apple Podcasts. Apple Podcasts. Apple Podcasts. Um, or whichever podcast app you use. It helps us learn more about you and what you love about the show so we can continue to bring the entertaining family-friendly content you're looking for thanks again let's get back to the show have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight yeah i can fly i'm here to fight for truth and justice in the american way People in this room, which one is A, wearing a spangly outfit, and B, not a fuse? There's only one god, man, and I'm pretty sure he doesn't dress like that. Batman has no limits. What was the reason they were thinking that they, they were, were thinking releasing? it was like the Batman trailer was going to take hype away from the whole restore the Snyderverse uh, stuff. But, you know, it wouldn't do anything. Yeah. It's the, the movement would still be there afterwards. Yeah, it's not going to make any difference. Makes, All right. So we got some trailers to talk about, right? We Maybe do. Nate, what's the first one we're talking about? Um, Black Widow had a trailer come out uh, kind of out of the blue. I wasn't expecting another one until the movie came yeah, we out. We were walking around uh, Epcot. Yeah. And all of a sudden it was yep. like, oh, wait, there's a trailer. So, <laughs> so how are we doing this, BB Nate? We're going to watch it and talk about it while we watch it. Is- well, we're going to watch it. You guys are going to listen and we're going to talk about what we, um, some things that, you know, kind of jump out at us and what we think are important. Not much happened that was like super jump out at us, uh, in this trailer, but it was good. I don't know. It'd be fun when we break it down. So, yeah. well, uh, here we go. You don't know everything about me lived a lot of lives before I was an Avenger. Yeah, just flashbacks to what's before going I got on. this family, I made mistakes choosing between what the world wants you to be. That's the Reverend set from Ultron, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Of course, the moment in Endgame. And who you are. Where she dies. They're trying to break our hearts. Yeah, oh my gosh. <laughs> That's the way you start a trailer? 
my like windows. Back to where it all okay, hold on. Wait, wait a second. Explain to me what that was. That was uh, that's basically kind of a snowsuit, but in the comics, it's uh, the White Widow suit. So, so I don't know who White Widow is. So, oh, okay, I get. I, it's just a white version of Black yeah. Widow. Yeah. yeah, they just call her White Widow. Mm-hmm. Is that like some like did, did she turn good or something in the comics and they called her that or not necessarily just different? It's just a rebranding, I guess. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, so, all right, we'll pick that back up. We have this little girl as well that just shows up. Well, that's her as a kid. Yeah. To go back to where it all started. Where did you think I was all this time? We have We've seen business. that in another film. Yeah, yeah. My girls are tough So that's girls. the young version of, what's his character? Uh, Red Guardian. The Red Guardian. Basically, He's Russian the Russian Captain, Captain America. America. So how does that work with Bucky? Because they, I thought that Bucky was like the Russian version. No, of, no, no, no. That's that was Hydra. Hydra's German. Yeah. Okay. Oh, like the Nazis. No, I thought it was Russian. No, it's Dude, it was the rogue German. Nazi science division. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. I knew that Hydra was that. Hydra was the rogue, you know, Nazi science division. I just for some reason always thought that when the Winter Soldier program was in Russia, I don't know why. I, I just was confused. I think I don't know. I think it's it not. No, I think you're right. Ways. That makes total. He's it, got the red star. I'm just gonna be honest with you. For some reason, Civil War just is a blur to me. It, it, I, 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 there are lots of stuff in Civil War. I just don't understand. We need to watch that one again. Yeah, we should. So, all right, let's keep this going. I'm sorry. That's the mom, I right? I think so. Played our role. It wasn't real. It was real to me. Everything. Okay, so who's that again? That's the bad guy, right? That's a Taskmaster. 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 Do we know him from anything else? Has no, he been in not, anything, not anything else? Not anything else for MCU. No, but, but he's, yeah, go ahead, Nate. Yeah, I mean, he uh, the the guy who's pulling his hood down in right. the scene we just saw um, is uh, he says bring her home. So I'm assuming that he's. The leader of the Red Room. The Red Room group. Mm. Yeah. So interesting. apparently Taskmaster works for them. So that's interesting and an interesting wow. development. Conflict. Okay. Would you sleep on top? You still jump well. Cool skydiving scene. Yeah, that, 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 nice. that transition was weird to me because uh, she was on the ground and now she's falling from the sky. One thing's yeah. for sure. I'm done running from my past. That's pretty cool. Yeah. The Russian lyrics to the Avengers theme. Yeah. That was pretty cool. It's like a good movie. Yeah, I don't think it tells us anything new no, about nothing. the story. Anything stand out to you that like I mean, we aren't expecting? We had the young Nat stuff, which was interesting, and we haven't had that before. And so. it, it seemed like they were talking like her parents and stuff were just like playing roles or something. Like they were just there yeah. to help her, like as grow she was, up. Yeah, right. as she was becoming that black yeah. widow. But then you have the the sister, the younger sister is what yeah, it's assumed. Yelena. Yelena. She says, but it was real for me. Yeah. So yeah. she was brought into this. Apparently, very, very young, even younger than Nat was, mm-hmm. and for her, this was her family, mm-hmm. and that's because that's the context on the trailer of yeah. when that conversation happens is that kind of thing. So that was awesome. Um, I'm I'm excited for it. Yeah, it looks like a good good movie. Yeah, is there anything else in there that like stands out that we need to talk about, or should we? Uh, I mean, fantastic action. I'm excited for the yeah born level car chase is what it looks like. That and the skydiving yeah fight, fight and like whatever. she's so calm as she falls without a parachute. From she had a parachute. Thirty? Th- did she? I didn't see. Yeah, she, she had a backpack, and she. And she if not, pack. she's you know Natasha. She'll figure it out. Yeah, she'll figure it out. Okay, she's yeah. she's fine. <laughs> That was pretty awesome. Yeah. So, all right. So what's the next trailer we're looking at? Look at Loki. Loki. We got yeah, like a Loki really trailer great trailer. Too. Yeah. Yeah. I think well, we should we, watch did, it then. Did we know that that was coming? No. We didn't know that either of these were coming. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm I'm super excited about this. Series. Yes, of course. Right, let's watch this. And like, like we need to talk about it, something, we'll stop it and talk about it. I know what this place is. That's actually kind of interesting that Loki says that. Yeah. 
so that's see um, clowns are playing that part. Who is that? So that's Judge. Um, I forget her name. Uh, yeah, Judge Renslayer. Um, she was in the comics. Uh, she. So I think she's like the daughter of this king or something. Um, and his name is Ravona and, or I don't remember really how it goes, but, um, she's a very important character in the comics. And so she has to do with King the Conqueror as well. Isn't that a uh, quantum mania? Yeah. He's, he's, so a Kang of, is supposed to be the main villain. In, it looks like he's going to be the main villain of this phase or something. So, like the Thanos of this kind phase. of maybe, okay. um, King's very important in the comics as yeah, well. He's a big character. Big, villains so it's um it's very exciting to see that we're getting him in the series already so awesome yeah. all right so we're ready to start this thing out again yes all right get to it again there and i see the clowns are playing their parts to perfection it's like some cosmic <laughs> yeah the yeah. dmv yeah i love it makes you sound super smart i am smart. i'm really excited to see an owen, owen wilson okay yeah, yeah it's okay. fun <laughs> such a good scene <laughs> oh this is awesome Please start to verify this is everything you've ever said. <laughs> this is absurd. It's a print, another piece of paper print. Sign this too. <laughs> we protect the proper flow of time. Yeah. You picked up the Tesseract, breaking reality. I want you to help us fix it. Yep. That's very end game. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's why Steve had to go back to put and, the stones. Yeah. And I think they needed to release this trailer w- n- with that in it because there were lots of people confused as exactly. to the Loki thing. So yeah. um, earlier in the trailer, we see Loki with a um, vest on and it says variant. And that explains um, a lot of things that happened already in the MCU, um, like Thanos. We have Infinity War Thanos and Endgame Thanos. Yeah, that's true. And we have Infinity War uh, Gamora and, and Endgame, Endgame Gamora. Gamora. Same so with if, so and Nebula, um, right. to go with the Thanos analogy, um, the early, the late Thanos in Infinity War was that timeline's Thanos. But the early Thanos in Endgame is a variant of that timeline's Thanos. So this Loki is a variant of the um, um, Avengers New yeah. York Loki. Loki. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the timeline is broken, is what yes. they just said. I mean, it's like everything is messed up because that one so, moment it happened. Yeah. So not just their timeline, a bunch of other. Timelines. Yeah, you see that on the screen. I know that people are listening to this right now, but this on the screen you see all it's these like timelines. Branches. Like, yeah, it, it does. And we saw sort of that happen with two branches when um, the Sorcerer Supreme yeah, yeah. was when explaining was that to, to Hulk yes. in Endgame. But now we're seeing that this is actually created like it's fractured mm-hmm. time, not mm-hmm. just two variants, but there's a fracture in time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want you to help us fix it. Why me? I need your unique Loki perspective. <laughs> Do I get a weapon? Nah. What's Rock's you card? Do we know what that is? So that's a um, variant of like the, the big Rocks on company. Oil company. Yeah, Rocks yep. on Oil. They've been touching on them, and every now and then the MCU. Kind Iron like Man a, Three. Yeah, like really, a, like a mm-hmm. bad corporation. So so it's like Luther Cor- LexCorp. Yes, yeah, it's very of, much yeah. LexCorp in in. I mean, Marvel. Oscorp is more like LexCorp, but this is kind of like a second version. <laughs> it's basically just the big bad corporation. Corporations. Yeah, yeah. So. I don't think it has much to do with uh, this. Series, but I think it's, but I think cool. it's, it's a cool little Easter egg. Yeah. Okay. I think that's where we see the. Uh, the so, hold on. Go ahead, Nate. Finish the Loki president later on in this trailer. I yeah. think that's where we see him. Kind of uh, looks but like before we store. continue, we're seeing this. Looks like the rubble of New York. And is that the yeah, Avengers Tower? That is the Avengers yeah, Tower. Yeah, a, where we paused it. You're right. This is a destroyed version of New York. We're not sure when this takes place. It, it might like actually be after Avengers on um, the first one. And the, uh, this doesn't look like that to me. The, the the I don't think I don't see. It looks that. like it's been a while because yeah. there's like grass and this stuff. This to me feels more like um, if the Avengers were never there to save New York. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. This could be interesting. I we'll see. My goodness. Luckily, he believes in himself enough for the both of us. Wow. 
Why? Yeah. It's adorable. Is that the bad guy? You think you could possibly? We're not sure. We're not sure who that is. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So that we, we're looking back here. I'm gonna I'm gonna scroll back because I want to see it again. Um. Yeah. So like he's a holding figure. Is he holding the? He's holding a TVA agent. It might be that Judge Renslayer. But kind of looks like her. Um. What does TVA not, stand for? Time um, Variance Authority. Yeah. Ah. Okay. You didn't know that. I did not. No, no, now you know. Do, do, Surprised do, do, you didn't know do. that. All right. <laughs> here we go. All right. That you think you could possibly manipulate me? Yeah, that's probably Rock's part. I'm ten steps ahead of you. You want to pause it? So yeah, that truck. that place we just saw—it's like this area. purple cracked area. Um, it really looks a lot like a. Oh, that's a great show. A little bit like a like I was saying, um, a sanctum sanatorium. Um, kind of a lot like, yeah. and later on in the trailer, there's another scene of it in a room and it looks exactly like one of the rooms in there. And so I'm wondering if it's a different timelines version, maybe a dark dimension version of the of Sanctum, Sanctum Sanctorium. Sanctorium. Wow. That's, that's a beautiful shot. It is. Okay. You're not big on trust. Are you? you can't trust me. Look, you have studied almost every moment of your entire life. You've literally stabbed people in the back like 50 times. having lunch in a cafeteria. <laughs> Why never do it again? <laughs> Is that what you were talking about? Yeah, I did. Looks good. Good trailer. Wow. Looks. What stands out to m- you guys the most in that one? I'm not sure. It's going to be one heck of a ride. <laughs> it looks like so much fun. I actually was looking around, and um, it will be in the same format as Falcon and Winter Soldier. Six episodes, 40 to 50 minutes long. So. Really? That's been confirmed? That's not just some theory that's no. out there? Wow. I like it. I'm really excited. I'm really excited. It looks so good. Yeah. It starts <laughs> June 11th. Is that it? It does. June 11th. Um, too long to wait, but... You know, you always have to wait when it comes to good things. So, so who's this Mobius? That's the character played by that's Owen. Uh, that's Owen Wilson's uh, kind of like a handler. Um, so yeah. he's in the comics too, right? He is. Okay. We also saw the, um, Loki sitting on a rock with another with a like a, a woman. We're not sure who that is, but in the comics, it might be from Lady Loki, who is a kind of a different version of Loki in the multiverse. So a variant, a variant. So mm. it might be another variant on the timeline. So that's awesome. Yeah. All right. Is there a third trailer? Are we going to do is... this. So we've done Marvel up to this point. Yeah, we have, but we got to switch over to DC. I can't not go a week without talking about DC. So we have Batman, <laughs> and the long Halloween part one. Yeah. And if you listened to last week's episode, we kind of talked about this. We did. And we did. We know a trailer was coming no, out. We didn't. We, it just, it literally just dropped unexpectedly, which was great because it was a fantastic trailer and highly anticipated. Yeah. We watched it, but we're going to watch it again. Here we go. Maybe. Once it get past the green, yeah, the PG thirteen, yeah, MPA thing. There we go. I can't really be a lawyer and a criminal, can I? Is that Dent? Yes. I want to win, but do I want to win? That's like a lot this? of cash. That's a lot of money. <laughs> I'm of two minds here. Two minds. So it's a coin flip. Yeah, that's that's all foreshadowing. Absolutely. Yeah, he's two faced, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Johnny Vitti was murdered tonight. The Falcone crime family has to be taken down. The art is gorgeous. It is. There's yeah. room for one homicidal maniac in this town. Obviously, that's the Joker. Of course. Got the Catwoman. Yeah. Why are you running? You could use a little fun. Cool looking Batmobile. Yeah. Very standard. Like, like classic. Yeah. Look. I thought you didn't hurt people. You thought And wrong. so Dent's the bad guy? Ish. Okay. You still haven't figured out who killed Johnny Vitti? A killer who only works on holidays. Scarecrow, right? No, that's Calendar Man. Calendar Man. Oh, that's crazy out there. But he's in Arkham. I take him out. Things are going to be different. We can start a family. Okay, hold on. So Calendar Man's the uh, the other bad guy. Yeah. Okay. He's is he in Arkham? Yeah, he's in a prison. But he, but he's like telling the, about all these these killings that only happen on holidays. Which Calendar Man only kills people on specific dates that are important. So, 
It's similar oh, okay. to Count so Dimmer. he's not okay because it would just the the assumption from my perspective was would be it was called Count Dimmer. He's the one doing this. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Do you know a lot about this thing? Nope. Okay. I'm not telling you guys anything about this because the twists that happen are so amazing. It's, you said it's like Sixth Sense level twist. Oh my gosh, the ending is so good. This The sequel to Long Halloween's twist, I did not expect it. Is that part two? No, Dark Victory. Okay. Um, I did not expect it at all. I was reading this. I didn't expect it either. It's just these So comics, do you think they'll follow it pretty closely? They have right, to. Well, let's pick up where we're at because you got, you know, Batman getting ready to get run down by some bad guys. Of course. So they the city ah. is fallen, Alfred. Then we must endeavor to lift it up again. Now oh, that looks so great. Who is Holiday? And who's next? That was good. Yeah. So Calendar Man is telling them about helping them understand what's going on with exactly. Holiday. Yes. And Holiday is the real bad guy. Yes, the Holiday. But we don't know who Holiday is. No, we don't know. And is that the twist? Yes. Oh. The, the who it is and why he's doing it. So it's like it. Hush, kind of. Yeah, but uh, hopefully or a better twist than um, the, the, animated the animated Hush. Movie. Uh, yeah, that was not yeah, good. Yeah, it it's so good. I'm so excited. Um, but yeah, it looks good. I want to watch all three of these. <laughs> yeah, they're, well, yeah. Well, I mean, we will. So, But um, this actually does place take place in um, really soon after Batman Year One. So I guess you can watch the Year One movie to get a... And that's out bit. too, right? Yes, that's okay. been out for many years. But, I mean, you can watch this on on-demand services sometime this summer. We don't have an exact date, um, which is sad because this looks very good and I want to see it soon. Yeah, but, we'll see it as soon as it comes out. Uh, I'm here in August is what I, is what I understand. So sometime Really, August? August. Mm -hmm. Really? Wow, that's, yep. that's late. Yep. But um, all of those trailers may be very excited for what's to come in the future. The near future, especially yeah. the long Halloween trailer. That looks yeah. so good. Yeah. But, um, Dad, do you have anything this week? Well, yeah. I mean, not much. It's not like last week. Would, uh, it kind of, last week kind of feels like a mirage. Um, <laughs> uh, we had a little bit of fun Star Wars news to talk about. But then this week came along and all of it's gone. <laughs> But thankfully, our friends over at DorksideOfTheForce.com have been speculating responsibly, and we're going to jump into the deep end with them. And that's all coming after these ads, personally chosen for you, to try to convince you that the internet has secretly planted a chip in your brain that knows what you're thinking. This is Tatooine Sons. Hey, hey listen, hey, listen closely. Hey. I've, got a, I've got a secret. Okay. I know how you can become a superhero. Ooh. Yeah, no, I'm not pushing super soldier serum or anything like that. What? So let me, let me explain. Uh, you know, in all seriousness, um, right now there are 400 million children living in extreme poverty. And that means that they're trying to survive on less than $2 per day. In fact, uh, 40,000 kids will die today because they don't have basic necessities like food and water and a dry place to live. But here's the good news. You can become a superhero for one child. Uh, we call these heroes child champions. For just $39 per month, you can provide all that they need and so much more. So... If you want to become a superhero, you want to change the world one child at a time, uh, check out that link in the show notes. Bulky religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good blaster at your side, kid. Rebellions are built on hope. The Force is with me, and I am with the Force. If you live long enough, you see the same eyes in different people. And, 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 you know, it's the market beast, so. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, no, okay. no, I forgot about that. I mean, I don't really believe that. <laughs> I mean, you know, but, they, you know, there's people that do want to put chips in everybody's brains, like Elon Musk talks about that. And Neuralink. So. So, no, thanks. I'm good. Yeah. So, but speaking of chips in the brain, let's talk a little bit about the Bad Batch. Um, again, I my job was actually pretty easy this week because I found this article by dorksideoftheforce.com, and I promise to link it in the show notes. You should definitely check it out. Uh, it's got a lot more uh, details than these little bits of questions we're going to talk about. But they came up with five theories 
from the Bad Batch trailer, and I liked uh, some of these ideas. So let's go through these in kind of a rapid fire, uh, quick reaction um, segment. You guys ready for it? Ready. All right. Does Tarkin want to install inhibitor chips in the Bad Batch? So here's the basic idea behind this theory. If the Bad Batch doesn't have inhibitor chips, then it makes sense for Tarkin to want to install them uh, so that he can assert control. Now, what's interesting is that the Empire does this later on in the timeline, in the chronology, Mm -hmm. with the Wookiees when they enslave Kashyyyk. Ah. They actually put inhibitor chips in them to make them more docile and controllable because, I mean, obviously, if you're on a planet full of Chewbacca's um, and you're Trying to take a stormtrooper, it's not going to end well, no, right? Because um, you can't hit him anyways. Yeah, so it's a, it's a lot of fun. So Sam, yes. uh, do you know for sure? Do we actually know for sure? Has it been confirmed from what we know that the Bad Batch doesn't have their inhibitor chips? No, that's all completely rumor up till this point. Um, the the latest trailer kind of um, hints that they don't have it and that they're, they're on the run, and that's why they're they're looking for him is because they didn't obey Order sixty six. But we don't have anything. Um, you know, for sure saying right. one way or the other at this point. Awesome. Yeah, no. BB Nate, what do you think yeah. about this storyline? Do you think, I, do you like the idea of, of Tarkin trying to hunt them down in order to install inhibitor chips in them? Do you think that's enough to drive a story? I, I think so. I think it's enough to have a villain and Tarkin and ma- I think if they treat Tarkin right, they can make him more intimidating than he was in the little bit we've seen him outside of a new hope. Um, so I think it would be really interesting to see the storyline. I've always thought that the Bad Batch didn't have inhibitor, inhibitor chips put inside of their brains because they needed to be fully, um, able to complete missions. So were the Bad Batch a mutation that just happened in sort of uh, coincidentally or accidentally, or was the Bad Batch something that was developed? So I think they said, um, we need to watch the arc again, but I, I, I think they said that they had mutations that were desirable and then they just took those mutations and amplified them and enhanced them basically so like each clone like just came out with their own for lack of a better term defect but they found out it was useful and so they they capitalized on it interesting okay all right theory number two here we go and we're gonna start talking about this guy a lot um is omega a force sensitive child. So here's the idea behind the theory. The emperor has always had this thing for capturing force sensitive children. Um, so I have the Jedi, but anyway, um, so, <laughs> Let's go so the idea different. behind this theory is that, that Omega is actually one of these force sensitive children. That's been, you know, absconded by the empire and taken us and taken away. We see this storyline really play out with the empire in star Wars rebels in, in, in a couple episodes, mm-hmm. but do you do you like this, Nate? Could could Omega simply just be one of these force sensitive stolen from his family? Um, maybe. I think that I don't. I think he's a clone, but we'll be getting into that in a little yeah, bit. Yeah, but yeah. I really do think that he's a very important character. I don't know if he was stolen from his family. Um, I mean, I think that he was stolen from his the second grade class on his field trip to you know but <laughs> um <laughs> but i i'm very excited to see this character and what he can do and i don't know i just, i he's so vague right now we yeah. have nothing well say what do you think about this idea what if he was taken by the jedi order at some point like they you know take four sensitive children and then um and then <laughs> taken to camino or something like that. you okay over there <laughs> water went down the wrong pipe yeah all right. Well, don't cough into the mic. Okay. Um, yeah. So, uh, do you, what do you think about the idea of him being in the Jedi Order, or taken by the Jedi Order, yeah. and not the Emperor? And yeah, I just don't understand why he'd be on Camino. I, I it uh, it doesn't make a School lot of field trip. <laughs> I mean, I guess, but the, isn't the Jedi like? Aren't they evil at this point? Then we know, like haven't they been branded? Well, like, in the in the state? in the view of the of the government, they are right. So. There's no field trips happening. I don't think. Um, but I, I just, I'm trying to understand why the Jedi would put a force sensitive child on Kamino for some reason. There's no force temples there. Nothing like that. Yeah. It does feel a little, a little bit off on that one. Um, here's the third theory. Is Omega a clone? All right. And this is kind of going back to what you were alluding to BB Nate. Um, we already talked about him being the possibility of being a clone of Palpatine and Ray's daddy. But this theory is a little different than that. Um, what about the idea, Sam, that the Kaminoans 
uh, had begun developing a new strand of clones from a different host. If you recall, in the Clone Wars, we find out that the clones, the strand had worn out. Jango Fett's clo- uh, f- strand of, of DNA, yeah, had they, been, they, okay. they were running out of, of, of a good a good sample sample for Mm -hmm. it. Um, What if they actually had started to clone somebody else um, as part of the clone troopers Mm. program? And that's where Omega comes from. Yeah. I think that's actually a a pretty uh, good idea. Um, It would feel like Dave Filoni because he would fly it in our face and the trailers get us thinking one thing and be like, oh, he's just a you know generic clone, no big deal. Um, but it would explain why the kid was like... Are you trying to say that we're not in Dave Filoni's trust tree? We are we're not, not in David Filoni's trust tree. We should be. We should be, but we're not. Um, but I mean, it would explain why he's like good with that laser bow later on and why he's like a warrior and stuff. And it would explain why the heck he's on Camino, this random kid. Um, so I'm not opposed to the idea. Would I prefer... Uh, it to be Palpatine's clone? Yes, but I don't think this is a bad idea in any way. Yeah, BB Nate, what about you? Which would you prefer, Palp's clone or, or generic clone? I'd prefer a Palpatine clone, but I feel like it would be, I feel like it would feel more like a retcon to just stick it in there as like, oh, well, we're going to keep going with this Rise of Skywalker stuff, so we have to put in that Palpatine clones existed. Um, it feels a little strange, and why would he be having clones all the way back then as a contingency plan, but... I think it would work. Well, the clones got to get old enough to have Ray. Yeah, but the problem is, is they they have growth acceleration. That's true. So if they if they decide to do that, maybe the growth acceleration uh, affects uh, reproduction ability or something. Maybe, maybe maybe they don't want to accelerate growth because they're hoping that he'll be force sensitive. Maybe because uh, the point uh, of that. All right, uh, number four is Fennec Shand hunting down Omega. The trailer seems to suggest that Shand is hunting down the Bad Batch, but could this be some a misdirection? Uh, BB Nate, what do you think? Is Omega the real star of this series? And they're just uh, kind of hiding that from us right now. I think just Mandalorian again. Yeah, I, I, I was thinking like Omega is just Baby Yoda. Um, so yeah, probably the main character of the series kind of just, and who knows, maybe this is kind of a handoff to a new series of, why would you hand off? Why would you create a new series to hand off it to a new series? Cause it's Dave Filoni. He does what he wants. <laughs> <laughs> and Dave Filoni, we trust. So yeah, no, I was, Sam, I was thinking about that. Is this feel like it's too much like the Mandalorian? Yeah. If she's chasing down a force sensitive, mysterious force sensitive child, it really does just feel like Mandalorian again. I mean, obviously the, the formula works, but come on, yeah. let's do something a little different. And this last one is going to probably get to Sam because he likes these characters. Uh, number five is crosshair, a trailer, a trader, a, a tra- trailer. I've got trailer on the brain. Is he a trader? We barely see any of crosshair in the trailer. Mm-hmm. Um, and this could be because he's a sniper and he's, you know, from hiding off somewhere, but Sam, could his absence actually be crosshair is a bad guy and he's actually going to turn on the bad batch. You know, while I would, while I don't want him to turn, I actually like the idea of the storyline. It would add some depth to things. Um, it would, I, I would feel right for his character. I think, I mean, it would be tough. It's a clone turning on his brothers, right? Like, and that would bring some some dark tones to the series. But you know, I think it could work. I think they could play it off well, and it would be an interesting uh, storyline, an interesting twist for sure. Um, you know, Crosshair, he's my guy in the in the group, so you know, I don't want him to turn bad, but I'm not opposed to the mm-hmm. idea. BB Nate, what would you think about any of the Bad Batch turning trailer traitor? I don't think that any of them would i don't think any of them should i think that this is the bad batch not the bad batch minus one or minus two um i i want to see all these characters in more than just a four episode arc working together because that's that's who the bad batch is they're a team and they work together as a team so i would rather see none of them be a traitor my will it happen maybe um but i'd rather see them not (laughs) that's cool well, of Wait. course, all of this is nothing but some fun fan speculation. Um, fortunately, we only have a few more weeks, though, before we get to see if these theories have any merit. But in the meantime, if you uh, are needing a little Star Wars fix, then go check out all the great content over at Dark Side. Dork. Dork Side. Dork. Thank you. Dork. D-O-R-K. Uh, Dork Side of the Force.com. Very cool. All right. Anything else you guys want to talk about? Anything else? 
All right, yeah, so uh, the Star Wars Republic Commando launches on Switch and PS4. We have a PS4. Do we have a Switch? Uh, we uh, do. Yeah, we do. We have but both. Do you think... play those? Do you play... Would this be a game you guys would buy? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we just have to make the initiative, too. Buy it. <laughs> so, um, And there's a rumored logline out for the Ahsoka series. Of course, this is just a rumor, so take it with a grain of salt. But it hasn't been confirmed. I doubt it's true. But it says Ahsoka Tano is on the hunt for the evil Grand Admiral Thrawn in the hope it'll help her locate the missing Ezra Bridger, the young Jedi that disappeared with Thrawn many years ago. That sounds exciting. like a good story to me. I like it. Yeah, I like and, it. And uh, the last one, George Lucas wanted Looney Tunes to play before A New Hope. Yeah, yeah it was like a Daffy Duck short or something. Yeah, well, this kind of goes back to these were supposed to be like the Flash Gordon serials from the 40s, 30s uh, okay. and 40s. And so you put a cartoon in front of a Flash Gordon serial. So put a Looney Tune cartoon in front of it was It was supposed Star to be like Wars. the... Like space Daffy Duck one, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was which is a fun, a, a very Flash Gordon Buck Rogers, yeah, uh, steal. Could you oh, imagine yeah. how like much that would change our perception of Star Wars though? If there was a cartoon <laughs> before the movie, yeah, that would like a Looney Tunes episode. It would maybe remind us that Star Wars it's is for kids. For kids. <laughs> All right, thanks for listening to Tatooine Sons, a pop culture podcast. And if you had a good time listening, it would be amazing if you could share this with your friends Please. that'd be great yeah, i hope you enjoyed appreciate it, it. Um, and of course this show is only a small part of the tatooine sons world so be sure to like us on facebook and follow us on twitter to get in on all the action um, and to stay updated on the latest pop culture news go to tatooine and i yeah. want to thank the two of you guys for oh, jumping in to help us you. try to build that site out we got a lot more work to do but uh, it'll it's get getting it done. there please don't forget to follow the show on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss our next episode and drop us a review on apple Podcasts or whatever podcast service you listen to except for spotify i don't think that they do reviews do I don't think they, they do yeah. dumb yeah um, but yeah uh, let us know that you love us it makes us feel good so <laughs> and then make sure you join us next week uh, where we will uh, share all of our reactions to the beginning of act three yeah. episode five of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier here it goes and it's gonna be a lot of fun it's gonna be a rough couple of weeks it is <laughs> um, anything else you guys want to say may the force be with you may the force be with you may the force be with you always this party's over I like that monkey. Don't get technical with me. Tony, please.